Okay, welcome to chapter 18, The Origin and History of Life. We know that history or life had to start at some point because we're all here. So we're going to discuss how that happened. There was an experiment done by these two scientists, uh, Miller and Yuri. And what they did is they had this cool little setup, uh, a whole bunch of glass and tubes and whatnot. And they had water, because we pretty much are sure that there was water on the planet. And they had these small organic molecules. They had um, CH4, which is uh, methane, NH3, which is ammonia, um, H2, which is hydrogen gas, and H2, which is water. Uh, sorry, H2O, which is water. And at one point... There had to have been this spark because we know that this was a very volatile um, atmosphere. So there was thunder, there was uh, lightning, it was really gross and nasty, hostile environment. Um, so there was a spark somewhere um, amongst these gases. And because of that spark, these uh, molecules rearranged themselves. And as a result, we ended up with these small organic molecules. Um, and something happened with these small organic molecules which somehow became the basis of life. Um, really what the important thing was is that all of science depends on assumptions, right? We've, we've gotten this far. Um, basically that's what everything is saying here. This text is what I just told you, all right? Some of the details of the experiments assume, too, that um, the substrates here, the methane, the ammonia, the water, and the, um, the hydrogen gas, came from the, the deep-sea vents. Um, and, in fact, those deep-sea vents still exist. Uh, they are still spouting out a lot of these, uh, these gases and these uh, um, molecules. Or, sorry, these, yeah, these molecules. So it's, it's not totally unreasonable to think that that's what the early uh, environment looked like. Next, uh, we have very good data that tells us that the Earth is approximately four and a half billion years old. Now, it might be, you know, 4.8, 4.2. You know, really, who's counting those 0.3 billion years? We know that the Earth is made up of minerals and organic compounds, um, and then it was made up of minerals. Eventually, those um, minerals and organic compounds uh, combine together to form what is known as polymers. So poly means many, um, so we made um, larger molecules, as you can see down here in this beautiful picture. Um, we had these organic molecules came together and made larger molecules, so those polymers. Those polymers all went together to create um, what we know of, uh, if you can imagine, uh, the, that plasma membrane that we've talked about. And eventually that plasma membrane kind of like popped itself and, and formed this circular shape, right, this sphere. Um, and that would eventually become what we know of as a cell. Um, and a cell, literally, the reason it's called a cell is the first person who would ever see uh, cork, um, the bark of a, of a cork tree, who the, the scientist who would see it under a microscope looked at it and was like, huh, these look like prison cells. And that's how it became known as a cell. Um, so these are prison cells. Um, eventually these would also, would really be known as protocells because these were the early cells. Um, so they would integrate with the other molecules to give rise to those living cells that we know now. Um, these were the living cells because they could reproduce themselves. We see here the earth clock. Uh, we start here at 12 a.m. with the formation of the earth. Uh, I'm just going to go quickly all the way around. And then we look at um, 11 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds. So that's where we are right now as the first appearance of the uh, Homo sapiens. So we are the Homo sapiens. 
Uh, we're going to go back here to the formation of the Earth. We see the oldest known rocks. We see uh, the earliest fossils. Those are the prokaryotes. Remember, these are the cells uh, with no, um, no nucleus. Uh, then we see the first photos photosynthetic organisms. These are the organisms that can um, make their own energy from the sun. We start to see oxygen in the atmosphere thanks to these photosynthetic organisms that are taking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and their waste product is oxygen. We see the eukaryotic fossils that are taking advantage of the oxygen that's in the atmosphere. They now put out um, fo uh, sorry, carbon dioxide as, a wa as their waste product. So we see a nice symbiotic relationship between the photosynthetic organisms and the eukaryotic organisms. Now we see multicellular organisms, so not just one cell, but multi-cells. We see uh, plants that went from uh, the water or aquatic plants, now they're on the land. Once we see land plants, we start to see land animals that are taking advantage of uh, food sources uh, on the land as well. And here we are. Okay, and here we see the time course as well. We see multiple billions of years. All right, and then you have your legend here of how long a second, minute, and hour are. We know the rocks, the ages of the rocks, right? The deeper we are, um, the younger the rock. Uh, these would be the older rocks because they're being pushed. All right, fun times. So here we just have a larger image of this. I always like to take you through this first, and then there's our disco party. Fun times. Always fun times. All right. These periods have names to them. Oops. I don't know why this always comes. All right. We have the Paleozoic, which is one of the older um, time periods. Um, this has um, sub-periods uh, known as the Cambrian. This is one of the oldest um, time periods, um, also the Ordovician. After the Ordovician, we have a mass extin extinction. There have been five mass extinctions, six, sorry, five mass extinctions. There is a belief, and there's very good evidence, that we are actually in the midst of a mass extinction a mass extinction is when you see the die-off of 50% of all species. Um, it is actually very troubling right now because we're seeing the die-off of a lot of plants, insects, and birds. Um, then we're starting to see amphibians and other vertebrates uh, that are very necessary to di diversity. Um, so back to what we're seeing here on this chart. So here, uh, after the Ordovician and before the Silurian, we see uh, marine species dying off. Uh, this is also what we're seeing currently. Um, we see in the Devonian, we see another uh, die-off of about 50% of coastal marine species as well as corals. That's another thing that we're seeing. We're seeing marine and coral. We say, see the Carboniferous, so a lot of carbon um, 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 let me see, uh, carbon era. There we go. Um, this is where we're harvesting a lot of coal, actually. So the, the forests grew, they were huge, and now that they've, they died off at this point, they fossilized and they end up forming coal. So now in the era that we are, right, 200, or let's call it 300 million years ago, we're harvesting and burning this coal. So there's some I don't want to call it irony, but there's, you know, the circle of life going on here. <clears throat> so then after the Permian era, we see another um, um, mass die-off. This is the biggest one by far. We're seeing 83% of all of land and sea species. Um, that's known as the Great Die-off or the Great Dying. Uh, before, at the end of the Paleozoic, before the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous, we see another mass die-off of 48, including the corals and the ferns. This is a plant type. 
Um, we see another 50% of all species, including the dinosaurs and the reptiles, that marks the end of the Mesozoic. And here we see the um, Paleogene. We have two parts of the Paleogene, the Paleocene and the Eocene. Um, you see the, in the Paleocene we have flowering plants that are, di are di diversifying. This is actually a major um, event because it takes a lot of energy to make a flowering plant and we start to see subtropical forests. Um, this means that the environment itself is beginning to change and is warming. Now, does that mean it's global warming? You know, I'm not touching that topic right now. All right. Um, we've got three neogenes, Olig Oligocene, Miocene, and Pliocene. Um, these are, you're seeing new plant species um, moving onto the land. We're going to cover the plants later. Then we have Quaternary, and that there you're seeing a Pleistocene. Um, and this is where we start seeing a um, the significant uh, sorry the extinction, and we have the age of the of the uh, Homo sapiens. Um, so yes, while an extinction event may have already begun, um, we have accelerated it. That's where the evidence is coming. Um, so we're in a quadrant, another quaternary, and we're in the Holocene. But that's the I guess the problem, which is what I'm trying to get at, that the humans are accelerating mass extinction with our habits, I will say. <clears throat> so, moving on. Don't want to be too depressing, right? So let's go back to some of these events. We have the first cell. The first cell diverged into two of um, two types of cells thereafter. It became the archibacteria and the bacteria. The ba archibacteria became the thermophiles. These are the um, temperature loving or they were tolerant of very crazy temperatures like I think it was something like four or five hundred degrees. I mean just ridiculous temperatures. Uh, the halophiles which was um, pHs and the methanogens, which were crazy, um, well, methane. Methane's not really a good uh, chemical to be hanging around with. <clears throat> and then you have bacteria, which were the different types of bacteria that perform different um, um, respirations. So this one created, um, used different chemicals like um, glucose to make oxygen. This one used um, light um, and CO2 to make oxygen and this one did not produce oxygen and so then you see the presence of a nucleus in the eukaryotes you start to see chloroplasts that now can start making um, uh, uh, sorry food from the sun more it's more advanced and now you start seeing all this diversity show up. You see more advanced bacteria, you see plants, you see animals, you see funguses, and you see protists. <clears throat> now how do we know all of this exists or that all of this happened? We know it happened because we have fossil evidence. So these cool little what think what we think look like rocks are actually a collection of uh, multicellular single, single cellular organism called uh, stromatolites and here we see the same thing um, these cool little primavilium something that I always have difficulty saying um, we see this at a very very tiny little magnification um, 20 microns uh, right here the scale bar so you can see how incredibly tiny it is these are photosynthetic uh, just really amazing that how old these things are. So fossil evidence or fossils help us to create timelines of evolution. Um, things become more and more advanced and that's what helps us understand how evolution occurs. So remember we had Darwin who thought stuff happened and then we have evidence that things most likely did happen, right? There's no way to prove that any of this happened. 
In science it is so difficult ever to prove that things happened. Um, be very wary, as I've said, whenever somebody says, I have proof. It's very difficult to have unequivocal proof. Now here we have some more fossils. I mean, this is some cool stuff, right? Up here we have this trilobite. We have this cool, weird-looking thing. It's an ichthyosaur. Um, it has a beak-like thing. It has these flipper-like things. It has the beginnings of this kind of um, whale-like, dinosaur-like thing. Um, you know, are these flippers? Are these feet? It, is this crocodile mouth? Is this a penguin? I don't know, but you can see how it might be some form of a transition animal, right? Then you have this uh, fossilized fish hanging out with fossilized ferns. Now, ferns are plant animals. Now, how did this happen, right? Did the ferns fall into the water? Did the fish jump out of the water? Right, I'm just making this up, okay? Um, but you can see how there's a relationship between a land animal and a sea or marine animal. Um, if we look more carefully, there might be, uh, this might be a jawed fish, which tells us how old the fern might be, because there's an evolution, there's a process of a jawed fish and an unjawed fish. Oops, sorry. And then you have these ammonites, which are shelled um, fossils. These guys died about 60, or died out, sorry. Uh, they went extinct about 66 uh, million years ago. These are cephalopods, which means that they actually had a head. Um, they were all over the world, so, you know, these, this was a huge population. And then you have this cool dinosaur footprint, right? A fossilized footprint. And we're finding more and more of these footprints. Um, we find human footprints. Um, we find human footprints going in one direction um, that seemingly are weighted differently. It's the same person, apparently. So uh, it's amazing. People have figured out that m most likely this person is carrying a child. I don't know how they know this, that it was most likely a child. Maybe there's, uh, you know, a smaller footprint next next to it. Um, unfortunately, I can't remember um, exactly what the evidence was. But it's it's mind-blowing that, that we find human footprints that are 10,000, 15,000 years old. Um, I was just reading this morning, actually, that we found human poop in a salt mine. Um, that has evidence of um, brewer's yeast that was used to... It's the same yeast that's made to make beer. Um, and then also um, a fungus that's made to make um, modern-day um, blue cheese. So, I mean, to think that 10,000 years ago there was... There were these funguses right I mean brewer's yeast yeast is a fungus um, that, that this stuff is being found in salt mines in what is human poop right so um, next time you enjoy a blue cheese um, blue cheese uh, sandwich or burger or on your salad you know um, just think about how old that that fungus might be <laughs> um, kind of gross but whatever um, I think, now I think about it, it's Iron Age. Iron Age was, um, 15, no, 3,000, 5,000, something like that, 3,000 years old. Um, I don't know. I think that was the Iron Age. Anyway, I'll stop babbling. Um, here you have a couple more fossils. Um, this thing, what does it look like? Kind of like a cockroach, right? Kind of gross. Um, I really, I can't, I can't stand cockroaches. Pretty sure that that's one of those. Um, and then, um, what does this one look like? Maybe a flea? Um, all right. And then I think this is a plant. This is one of the rooted plants. I think this is a land plant. Um, and then this is another plant right here. So, you know, we can see the evolution of insects, um, all sorts of cool things. All right. So with that, um, I, I really hope that you guys start to appreciate how 
the planet has evolved. Um, we see how um, one, I'm sure you guys have seen this, how there was one continent at one point. Um, this lends some credence to how um, Darwin would have seen certain organisms or certain animals, certain plants on in one part of the world or one island. And then as the world broke apart, um, even Africa from India or Africa from Eurasia, um, you start to see certain plants, as long as the environment is similar, um, you start to see similar plants and animals, but their evolution changes. They become specific species based on um, how that environment changes. Uh, but you can imagine how Darwin saw these different things and how we, if you travel, if you have the opportunity to travel, which I strongly encourage you do, you'll see similar plants, similar animals, um, even in different countries in, in different continents. And you'll kind of look at it and go, huh, I guess that's true. So like I said, I hope you appreciate how the world has evolved. Um, from one giant supercontinent into the number of continents that we have now. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think I got that right. Did I count right? Um, so, um, yeah, with that, that's the history of life on Earth. Hope you enjoyed it.